Well, the Moray coastline is pretty spectacular, isn't it? It also contains some pretty spectacular geological structures, and it's a great place to build up techniques to draw cross sections, particularly through folded strata. We're going to use bedding and cleavage relationships to predict the position of outcrops on major folds and then use that information to draw cross sections of the fold structures. Let's start with this outcrop. Can you see the bedding? It's here, so we have a sinform. The hinges, points of maximum curvature, join them up and that's the axial trace. So what about cleavage? Well here's bedding and there's cleavage. OK, what about over here? Bedding dips left and cleavage is vertical. So they're like this. So a sin form and its cleavage. OK, so I want to capture the geometry that I've just recognised on the outcrop there on a sketch and to get the geometry correct. Now, first of all, it's an outcrop face that's like this. So it's got a side and a side. So we need to orient it with a bearing at each end, uh, which I'll do with my compass. So uh, essentially, the outcrop's oriented like this. So um, that direction there is towards 100. Uh, so that's 280. So we've got 280. 100. Okay, it's important to do that because a bearing just taken off the outcrop like this, when we're this close in, well, you could be looking at a very similar view and have quite a big different bearings onto it. So, when you're doing an outcrop sketch close up, it's important to do a bearing at each end to show the orientation of the face. Okay, so this is what I've done I've oriented my sketch like this, I've got a 280 100, and I've done a silhouette of the outcrop that I can then use to locate where I am and put the geometry on. And I tried to do it without vertical exaggeration. I'll scale it in a second. OK, so now we need to use that template to draw on the geology, which I'll just do. And I'll put the bedding on and then the cleavage. It's my bedding trace going through. Now I'm going to sketch on some cleavage um, to see the geometry. So I'm just going to draw up a simple model um, interpretation of this uh, system in here, which just draws a simple sin form. We see the layers come round into a sin form, and we can see the cleavage changes symmetry with respect to bedding as you cross from one limb to the other. And I'll just draw that as a model interpretation. So um, I'll just show you that now. So here's our simple interpretation of a, of a simple sin form, and the cleavage changes vergence from one limb to the other, which is what we see on the sketch and what we've identified on the outcrop. So a simple, uh, quick structural interpretation of the stack. And I've put the um, why I've done the sketch and the location. I could again give it a grid reference and so forth. Of course, we can go on and use this sketch to add data and actual measurements from one limb to the other, uh, should we desire. So a simple way of collecting structural information onto a sketch and building an interpretation as we go. So we can use structural relationships, bedding and cleavage, to deduce which limb of a fold structure we might be on. Now let's use that idea to go and build a cross section. Let's work here at Old Tarlair Lido, starting off in the west. Well, this looks like a pretty good place to start. Let's have a look down here. Well, a good thing to do is to scout around the outcrop a bit. Let's have a look and see what we can find. So down in here, I can see there's a prominent layering that's going up through the arch there like this. So there's some layering and there's some pretty clean bits down in there that we can go and have a look at. So let's just scoot in there and have a look. 
Well, that's quite nice, isn't it? Look at all that in there. That's clearly some primary lamination or bedding in here. We've got some sands and some slightly finer grain layers in between. So there is our bedding. So the main layering in the rock is the bedding. But if we just back out away from here, we can see that this bedding is essentially in the same orientation all the way through this outcrop, give or take a little, which is good. So there are no major folds or anything in here. So we can go and treat this as one piece of outcrop in terms of structure. Let's go and have a look down in there. That's quite interesting because I can see another slight fabric developed. Still the inclined bedding down to the left. Let's zoom in a bit. That's quite nice lighting, isn't it? So I can see coming down here is the bedding where we've got this sandstone in here. Um, and in here there's this uh, slightly finer grain material and it's got a fabric coming down like this. So we've got bedding like this and another fabric going in in this sort of orientation. Uh, and this, if we look carefully in this, is cleavage. What's really interesting is the cleavage is picked out better in this material than it is in the sandstone. Um, so in fact the cleavage intensity is picking out the rock type. So I'm now just going to sketch those relationships that we've just seen in the outcrop. Right, let's get going then shall we? So, let's get the rucksack off, get our kit out. So, get my uh, large format fuel notebook and got this set up with my pencil ready to go and I'm going to capture some of the geometry on that outcrop. I've already identified the inclined bedding coming down like this and this other fabric but I'm just going to set this up by just collecting a piece of outcrop that I can sketch something in here And the next thing we're going to do is orient it. So the orientation of the outcrop face is like this. So we'll do that as a bearing, like this. Here we go. So that direction there is west, so more or less. That's 280, 280, 100. So I can orient my sketch. 280, 100, because the orientation is going to be important to us. And I'm sketching about uh, a metre high. So that's what I've got on my sketch ready as a template to build up the information. So I find it useful to add some colour to my sketch. The bedding there is in yellow, uh, the cleavage picked out in red. In those relationships in my sketch, the sketch is oriented and scaled. Uh, and that's the outcrop there that I've just been sketching. So we've seen the relationships there, the bedding dipping down to the left and the cleavage dipping left as well, but much more steeply. And we can use these relationships to infer the position we are on a fold structure. So let's just start off by sketching up just something really simple like this, which shows some folded beds coming around like this. And now I'm just going to draw on some cleavage, just like this. So our cleavage is axial planar. Now as it's parallel to the actual planes of the folds that we've drawn in here. And we can use these relationships now to just try and see where we are on the geometry we've got uh, behind. So let's just hold the sketch up like this and then pull away and see what we've got. So I can see the bedding dipping to the left and the cleavage more steeply to the left. And we bring our sketch back up. We can see that we are in this position here marked with the X. So in other words, we're on a limb here. If we go to the right, we should find an antiform, an upward closing fold um, over on that side over there. Now, the other feature we can use in this is the orientation of the cleavage. If it's parallel to the axial plane, tells us our folds are inclined and the axial surface of the folds is dipping to the left. And therefore the, le the limb over on the right that we should go to if we cross beyond the fold hinge uh, should be quite steeply dipping. So there's my uh, field information from here, the sketch at the top, which is the observations, telling me that I've drawn a sketch to show the bedding cleavage relationships. That's all I'm trying to do here. It's showing the scale and the orientation. I've deduced that the fold 
um, that the cleavage verges to the east and therefore predicts on the basis of my idealized conceptualization of folding down there that we should, if we go east, walk into an antiform and on the far side of that, the limb on the far side of that antiform should be quite steeply dipping. Uh, obviously the cleavage would uh, change its vergence over on that side. Uh, so we can make a bunch of predictions from these outcrops in here um, that we can test by walking a little bit further on the coast, uh, which we'll do shortly. But before we do that, let's make some measurements of these uh, structures that we've just sketched out in our notebook. So let's start off with this bedding plane down in here. Well, this is dipping uh, 44 degrees. The strike is 188 dipping uh, west. So we'll put that into our notebook. And down in here, we can see some really neat uh, cleavage that we can measure as well. So this is our bedding plane and here's our cleavage and you can see as you come down the bed itself looks kind of scaly doesn't it which is all the cleavage coming out from the bed to make these intersections of the cleavage coming in like this and intersecting with the bedding plane. So uh, this little sort of irregular wiggly line through here is the intersection of the bedding and the cleavage. Now that's also a useful thing to measure up. Um, so we're going to measure the cleavage we're going to measure the bedding here and we're going to measure the line of intersection between the planes of the cleavage and the plane of the bedding. Okay, so there's my annotated data uh, onto my sketch. I've measured the bed around here. It's got a strike of 190. It's dipping 46 towards the west. The cleavage has got the same strike of 190 and is dipping 68 west, so more steeply than the bedding. And the line of intersection has no plunge on it at all. It's a horizontal line on a trend of 190. So, how can we use that information to tell us something about the larger scale structure? Well, I'm going to sketch out a little bit of an idealized fold again. And this time make it slightly more three-dimensional. Like this. Okay. And the cleavage intersection I draw the cleavage in like this the line of intersection of the cleavage with the bedding is parallel to the fold hinge line H B C so the point of this is that we can use the measurement of the bedding cleavage intersection on one of our limbs here to infer the orientation of the hinge line of the major fold structure to which these structures relate. So if we come back to our sketch in here, uh, we're in a situation like this where this fold structure presumably comes around something like this and our lines of intersection of bedding and cleavage that we've seen on the bedding planes are going to be parallel to the fold hinge. So the hinge line of our major antiform that we expect to find when we walk further along uh, should be essentially on the same trend as 190 uh, and have virtually no plunge. So in other words, the hinge line will be horizontal. So we've sorted these structures out here. We know what the uh, bedding's doing, what the cleavage is doing. We've used the vergence to infer the presence of a larger scale fold structure. We know that we're on a limb on this side and we expect to cross an antiform as we go along the coast. So let's keep going along this section along here and see what we can find. working along I'm checking that the vergence remains the same which means we've yet to reach the antiform hinge and we can simply record bed cleavage relationships and vergence as we go gradually building up a profile So those are pretty thick sandstone units there. You can see the bedding still dipping down to the left rather more gently than we just saw over there. 
but we know the sandstone doesn't have very good cleavage developments in it. So if we want to push on, I think we'll go to the other side of the Lido over there. Well, this looks like a pretty ideal place to go and have a look at. It's uh, not that massive and sandy this time. Well, this is a pretty blowy corner. Let's have a look at these rocks in here. So here's bedding. And here's cleavage. So we're bedding like this and cleavage like that. So let's sketch this up. It's uh, oriented, so this time west is off to the left and uh, east is off to the right as it was before. Uh, and it's got a scale and you can see bedding and cleavage and I've added some measurements that I've made here. Um, and I made a little sketch to show the virgins which is around like that. So we found the steep limb that we predicted from the arch. And it has the right virgins. And we can add these outcrops just offshore. Sandstones dipping right. That's to the east. So here's our basic set of observations. So the question now is, as we look back across here, where's the hinge? Because those outcrops on the other side of the Lido are on the other limb. So the hinge must lie in the Lido somewhere in there. So here's our basic profile. And now we can build this up into a cross section by extrapolating into the air. So here's the cross section with outcrops showing the key evidence, the dips of bedding and cleavage, and critically, the vergence which switches from the western limb to the eastern limb. Just like we saw at the arch and on the far side of the Lido. And the antiform with its inclined axial surface running down into the Lido. The section is oriented and scaled and titled. And it links to a sketch map that shows where the outcrops are. We could go on and draw onto the map the axial trace of the antiform. So basic observations building up into more elaborate interpretations for this part of the Moray Coast. The Moray Coast of Aberdeenshire, a great place to build skills in structural geology.